So this was an interesting challenge. You guys really wanted to see this for some reason, and after doing this, I don't blame you. So let's find out, how long can you survive on the moon key? The moon key, and yes it's pronounced key, not K, is a relatively new addition to Don't Starve. I mean sure, it's been in the game since June of 2022, but still. It's an island found deep within the ocean surrounding the constant, and is home to the boisterous band of monkeys that you may have noticed raiding you on occasion. This island is the only place in the game where you can get access to some powerful things like banana bushes, replantable reeds, palm cones and the docks and cannons that they let you craft. So living here would be a good idea, right? I mean, yeah, probably. But living only on this island with nothing else, no prep or anything? No, it's a terrible idea. How do we know this? Well, we already attempted this challenge without prep and it was just dreadful. The only thing we could do was to sit around the portal for like six days until we died to boredom. You thought the Lunar Island was oppressive? Yeah, right. I'll go into more detail about that later in the video, but just to let you know, we did go with prep time for the actual run, since you guys didn't seem to mind on the ocean video, so here's how it's going to go. After spawning in, we got three days of prep to get anything and everything we'll need to survive. Once those three days are up, we're going to teleport ourselves to a sloop moored on the quay. Then, Try to survive as long as possible without leaving this wretched island. Game over if we both die and our goal is to survive at least a year. Standard world generation settings like always, and only UI mods like always. We're going to do something a little bit different this time around however, and set all the seasons to be short. This is because, spoiler alert, there's not much we can do on this island, so getting to the later seasons sooner will help make it more tolerable for us. So now, safe seasons, aka autumn and spring, are 12 days instead of 20, and dangerous seasons, aka winter and summer, are now only 10 days instead of 15. Think of it this way, all you would have missed out on are days where I just say, we did the same thing as the last day. I'm not going to do this with all challenges though, just the ones that lack much to do. So, how did it go? Right, character choices. Since we're doing a prep time run this time around, we don't have to pick Wilson and Maxwell. No disrespect to any Wilson and Maxwell mains, I just like some variety myself. So I went with Wolfgang. I have played incredibly little of Wolfgang both pre and post rework. I know he's really good at killing stuff and harvesting stuff, so that will suit my needs perfectly. This challenge is all about making the most of what little we have, so Wolfgang will help there. We'll worry about any potential hunger issues we have, if and when they arrive. Tig went with Weber, a character they too have a little experience with, but wanted to play nonetheless. They had the right idea of getting early access to spider dens and a consistent supply of silk. Introducing what materials we can to this island will be extremely useful. Spawning in, we did the usual early game rush, grabbing twigs, grass, flint, you know the deal. But of course, we have three days, and as we saw last time, that ain't a long time. Our goals were the same as last time too. I wanted to get lots of flint, gold and dig up a decent amount of tufts and saplings while Tig focused mainly on wood and whatever they could find. After getting massive I came across a quarry like biome. I know some of you guys were quick to correct me on the last video when I misjudged a triple mctusk biome as a quarry. I appreciate it but look, if the ground is rocky it's a quarry biome to me. When Wolfgang is mighty he mines rocks and chops trees way faster than your average character. Granted, the tools take more durability damage, so it's not any more efficient, just faster. Sometimes you can even deal a crit that will just instantly destroy whatever you are mining, which is more efficient, but rare. From there, I found my way into a mosaic biome. See, I know my biomes. Grabbing more and more stuff. We can get wood, stone, twigs, and grass on the moon key, but having a nice supply from the get-go will come in real handy. Day 2 and already looking good. A decent handful of gold, rocks and wood meant I could make a science machine on the break of dawn and start getting myself a backpack shovel and see about pre-crafting some stuff soon. I went on my way, shoveling up some saplings and grass. I wanted a stack, so ten, of each. More would have been nice, but with the limited inventory room we have going there and the fact that grass and twigs can already be obtained there, ten was enough for us. I grabbed the occasional carrot and juicy berry to keep my mighty belly full since Wolfgang does have higher hunger drain when gaining might. I made a log suit and spear before putting them to use mulching a tall bird. Damn, I forgot how much damage old Wolfgang can do. 
This will be useful since weapons are not something we're going to have a lot of over on the island. I spent some time breaking a spider den to get some silk since I had an idea. You'll see it soon. I went to Tig's side of the map since they found lots of pig houses but no rocks to smash them up with, so I took that upon myself. Thanks to everyone on the last video who recommended I did that. It would have definitely helped during spring. After making epic use of my time opening up a teal shirt skin, I pre-crafted an alchemy engine and then I used the silk I got to make a bug net. My goal here was to catch a bunch of bees, a couple of butterflies and make a bee box plus flower field on the moon key. Genius I know. Caught the four bees I needed and a couple of butterflies as I nearly died to the killer bees. Genius, I know. Should have gone mighty before that. Genius, yeah. Well, we got the materials needed to make the V-Box now, so that's a new material we can introduce to the island. I had an incredible idea to heal the health I lost by bagging this mandrake I stumbled across. Cooking it and eating it for that huge 100 HP from it. Now I won't instantly die to monkeys when landing on the island. Oh, if you wonder what Tig was up to on these prep days, same here. I know they said that they would record their footage, but they didn't. Blame Tig for that. Hopefully next time though. We spent what little time we had left just grabbing anything, enjoying the mainland whilst we could. For tomorrow, it's time for the big arrival. Right when the day hit us, we gathered back at the portal and teleported our way to a moored sloop on the quay. Seemed relatively safe so far. The powder monkeys here ain't aggressive, they're just really annoying and will steal your stuff. So we had to clear them out whilst we still had stuff to use. I armed up Tig since all they got during prep were raw materials. We started to fight them as they too started to empty our inventories. One of the cheeky gits ran away with my dumbbell. My mistake for keeping on my first inventory slot. I'm not mighty, I need to be mighty. Uh, but they nicked my dumbbell. Oh, don't let them take that! <gasps> Fuck it, they actually ran off of my dumbbell, so I can't get massive now. No, 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 not the bug net. Oh, you f Fine. <laughs> we can get it back. Had to make another to get mighty before we went back in to start rambling. I gave Tig my hammer so they could smash up the buildings whilst I kill any monkey that tries to stand their ground. Cleared up a couple more houses, not all of them since they could be useful to keep at some point. I started to work on the base. I got a fire pit down, I got an alchemy engine. So far this wasn't too bad. I started to chop down those funny looking palm cone trees. They are like normal trees except they also drop palm cone scales that can be used for things later. However, unlike normal trees, they'll only drop one cone that you can use to replant them. To make up for this however, their stump can be dug up for two logs instead of one, meaning you get more wood per tree than a normal tree. Plus the scales. During prep, Tig burned down a small forest, so with that charcoal I made us a crock pot. After that I used the wood I chopped up to make a bee box, since the bees were starting to starve. Silly bees, that's the name of the game. I hammered these bits of broken machinery everywhere. They give you gears, frazzled wires and cut stone, which is really good. Did I mention they're everywhere on this island? Legit, the best place in the game to get gears hands down. Gotta keep a mental note for this in the future if I'm ever having a bad time finding gears. Just come to this island. I put the bee box next to the queen since she looks like she'll keep them safe and planted some flowers nearby. This is our island now. Tig planted their spider eggs near the dock we landed on. Now we have access to monster meat, silk, spider glands and the occasional spider that will wander into our base. Awesome! As day broke I made a think tank. No we're not already planning our escape. As per the rules, we ain't allowed to leave this island. I just wanted to see about putting the planks we got to good use. And this good use was a trawler net. We saw great value from these things on the last challenge, so we're going to get them down early this time. So I guess it's time we talk about the giant purple portal in the room, huh? This is the unnatural portal. It's big, cool, and glowy, but more importantly to us, poops out resources randomly. The resources that can chuck out as mundane as twigs, grass and rocks, but can also include palm cone sprouts, monkey tail reeds and banana bushes. Also the occasional live monkey and crust to shine, but they're not noteworthy at the moment. Whilst the basic resources are very welcome, let's talk about the monkey tail reeds. These are essentially normal reeds that you can find in swamps on the mainland. Only difference is that they can be moved and replanted. Amazing for wicker bottoms all around the world, but for us, 
Well, we don't have too much use for Papyrus at the moment, so we're just going to end up using them as firewood. As the day drew to its conclusion, I got a pigman house down. Add meat, pigskin and poop to the pool of resources we can now obtain. Very nice. On day 6 I saw the portal surging. It will do this from time to time. It basically starts erupting, shooting out resources at a massively increased rate for a short while. This seemingly always includes a monkey however, so we gotta be careful they don't just steal all the resources and run off. They're not too strong but do carry a terrible curse. Looks like pigmen will attack monkeys on sight. I'm sure there's a farm design you can use with this knowledge. I do love the idea of actually living on this island, but on a normal playthrough. Maybe a future video or stream? Having your own private bit of land seems really cool to me. Plus a free portal that gives you free stuff? Sign me up. I started to plant these banana bushes. Another thing you can get from the portal. What do these do? They... grow bananas. It's a banana bush. Now joking aside, these are really useful since the only other way to get bananas on a typical playthrough are through ruins. And I don't know about you, but that seems a bit too impractical for everyday use. Bananas can be made into some decent dishes, however we can only make one since we'll never be able to get access to ice on this island. Of course would be more useful in a normal playthrough, but alas, you guys hate me and force me to suffer like this. JK, I love you guys. I gave some bananas to the queen and she took those weird beads out of my inventory that the monkeys have been forcing in there on death. We'll go over what they do another day. I got me old pal Pitchfork out and started to block out the base. Planted those saplings and grass tufts I got since they ain't no good in my inventory. We don't have many ways to get fertilizer at the moment, but we'll sort that out soon enough. Looks like I may have placed the pig houses a bit too close since they harassed Tig, but at least they now know how I feel with the spiders. Spent most of the day getting materials, building the base out a little bit, but on the afternoon of day 7 we got our first hound attack. Wasn't an issue, but I made a football helmet just in case. I mean, we got pigs on the island now, so pigskin isn't finite anymore. May as well. My spear broke during the fight, and since flint is a limited resource, I really don't want to keep making them over and over. So instead, I decided I'll use these cutlasses from here on out. They only do 27 damage, which is the same as an axe, but when held by a mighty wolfgang, do up to 54 damage. Sure, not as good as using actual weapons, but this is enough for me, for now. Day 8 heralds the start of the status quo. Much like how on the lunar island we walked around picking stone fruit and other such, on this island there's not much you can do other than loot the portal, fight the monkeys, fight the spiders, yada yada. I still go by what I said at the start of the video, living here on a normal playthrough would be amazing, your own custom island with a free resource generator. Sure the monkeys are annoying but pfft, nothing pig houses or Winona catapults couldn't fix. I chopped some wood. For some reason Tig brought normal trees to this island. They look a bit out of place but the ecosystem will love it. Using this wood I marked the opening of Wolfgang's Moon Gym. Hey wait, despite the island being called the Moon Key, there's nothing here related to the moon. I mean I get it, Moon Key sounds like monkey, really epic, but where's the damn moon? We don't usually have to worry about the monkeys too much since they rarely venture far from their houses, and the only houses we have left are on the docks, none near the mainland at all. The portal will spawn them occasionally though. I may as well get this out the way now since today was a bit of a snore. The monkeys on this island, as you saw, drop accursed beads. You're forced to pick these up and can't drop them, only way to get rid of them is by giving bananas to the queen. So what happens when you collect 10 of these beads? Why, of course, you turn into a monkey. Or, well, sorry, a wonky. Wonky is basically the DST version of Wilbur. Your original character's abilities and stats are completely overwritten by theirs. Stats are lower, including your speed, but you do enter a sprint burst if you run long enough. The monkeys on this island will also stop attacking you and your favourite food becomes bananas. I did contemplate becoming a wonky for this video, but decided that Wolfgang would just be better at every way. Wonky only video soon? As you can see, our base is starting to fill out quite nicely. Got a little patch of banana bushes in the middle that we still need to fertilise. Didn't have the food to spare to feed the pigs to get them to poop, so our plan was to make a composter for our fertiliser. On day 11, Tig started to work on their farm. If you know Tig, a self-declared wormwood main, then you know that they adore farming. It's good for me since I don't have to touch it and they'll just give me fridges and fridges of veggies. Though it will be a bit difficult on this island since we'll never have any access to fresh water, but hey, the snow and rain will do a good job at that for us. As for summer, let's not talk about that yet. Full moon on this night, 
didn't mean much since A, nothing on this island reacts with the moon phase, and B, it's already bright as heck thanks to those cluster shines and the, well, you know, giant glowing pink portal. I made a chest next to the fire pit specifically for housing all these monkey tail reeds. They'll instantly bump the fire pit up to max level and we have an infinite amount of them, so our fire making abilities are going to be set for life. However long life on this island may last. Now it's no secret at this point, but our food situation ain't looking too bright. It's tolerable for now, but we're gonna barely be able to put full meals together soon. See, I thought these banana bushes and such would be enough, but honestly, bananas and the food you can make them have really low hunger stats. Also not helpful that I'm playing as Wolfgang, a food eating machine, but still. The troll net isn't all too reliable and due to this area being coastal ocean we're only ever going to catch small fish most of the time. The spiders will be a nice consistent food source but unless we can find more stuff to act as fillers I'm not going to be able to eat them. Oh, right, it's uh, it's winter. These always catch me off guard on these challenges but especially so since the shorter seasons this time around. What are your guys' thoughts on shorter seasons? I know some people prefer to play like this, but I'd like to know your opinion. I typically play with standard seasons, but felt shorter ones would make this challenge easier to digest. Not easier to do, just more interesting since... Well, as you can see, there's not much I can say about most days. Don't get me wrong though, I am enjoying this challenge. Just hard to write this script when there's a lot of fluff days, especially since I don't like skipping days. I conducted an important experiment? Oh, let's find out. What happens if you put a spider don't starve in the water? <laughs> no! Okay, that felt pretty bad, I'm not gonna lie. I made a bird cage and bird trap to get this. Get a pet bird! This will give us a nice source of eggs from any monster meat Tig hasn't munched on. We're gonna need all the food variety we can get lest we suffer from potassium poisoning eating all these bananas. I decided to upgrade my cool gym. I mean, we have plenty of stone anyway from the funny portal, may as well put it to good use. These heavy statues will give me a lot more might per rep on the gym. Boss statues are worth more than regular statues. Maybe you'll have a way of getting one of those soon though. Our second hound attack came later that day. As you can expect with hound attacks as Wolfgang, even with underpowered weapons like the Cutlass, they're easy as pie. The dogs do kind of stagger in since they get caught on piers and start fighting monkeys, but nothing we couldn't handle. Day 15 and it finally started to snow. I haven't mentioned much about winter yet since it's kinda the same as winter was on the boat. We have no need for insulating clothing since we're never too far from base. As in, we're never not in our base. If we need heat elsewhere we can just make more fire pits since stone is everywhere. I can't wait until I play normal DST and completely underestimate winter thanks to these challenges. You know, one thing may be missing from this winter though. Or should I say, someone. But who knows, maybe they'll turn up. I have been reading massive energy signals from the portal using my... Uh, portalometer. Something big is trying to get through. Hmm. Reminds me of what happened on the lunar island. Seems like monkeys won't leave their houses during the winter. And since the portal monkeys don't spawn armed, I got no way of getting any more cutlasses. So I got a yeast spears anyway. Also, much like the stone fruit of the Lunar Island, these banana bushes will continue to grow throughout winter, just like normal bananas, in real life. Totally. Tig finally got their compost bin down. Would have been a bit better to have this sooner rather than later since our food situation is looking grim and all these banana bushes ain't doing much unfertilised. Well, at least the spiders still spawn and portal monkeys drop meat. It's crumbs of food at a time, but at least it's food. The day consisted of more chopping, more looting, more you know the deal by now. Plopped a drying rack down because, why not? Probably not the best idea with our already limited food, but ayo. I'm not gonna lie, the nature of this ultra restrictive challenge is getting to me. Hey, next video can we do like something that isn't just stuck in the same place? Thank you. Food was getting real bad. Couldn't put together full crock pot meals currently, so I decided to spend some surplus monster meat and create a wear pig. Converting four monster meat into two regular meat and pig skin seemed like a good trade to me. On the bright side, at least Tig had an awesome revelation at this point. Oh my God. I completely forgot. What? I, I 
don't get sanity loss from monster food. What? Yeah. Why did I think I would? No, you can make monster lasagna and it's like really good for you. Bit silly, isn't it? Bit silly that you forgot can that. Can I just put three monster meat in there? Yeah. Sanity was starting to get kind of low. But due to the nature of banana shakes, our sanity will always bounce back up. In fact, I can only recall going insane during this whole thing once. Should be quite soon, actually. The occasional crop from Tig will keep us on the knife edge food-wise. We could also hunt and kill the Cruster Shines, but they rarely drop fish compared to shell pieces, and they're just kind of annoying to chase after. I still stand by my Wolfgang pick being a good choice. The damage and harvest rate buff have been real helpful. Sure, the food drain has been a bother, but nothing I won't bounce back from. Unrelated, but something I should have brought was marble. Could have made a marble forest to get marble suits and marble dumbbells, which Wolfgang can use easily when mighty. Energy signals were starting to spike from that portal. Whatever was on the other side of there was going to burst through at any moment. We decided we should prepare for whatever could come through. I made a couple of football helmets using the pigskin we got from the pigs. Might as well use it while we got it. Also got some jerky from the drying rack as a small but potent heal. It wasn't much, but it was better than naught. The hounds turned up right around dusk. Bad timing since this thing was about to arrive. Cleaned them out, no sweat, but as soon as night hit us, it arrived. Go away! Damn, Wolfgang is good. Barely broke a sweat that entire fight. Had to deal with some residual nightmares afterwards, but it's all good. Oh, and Tig did fine as well, thanks for asking. But yeah, we decided to spawn the deer clops in. It was just something we could do. I don't know how you guys feel about us spawning in bosses on these restriction-based runs, but do let us know. I personally find it fun and interesting, but I can see if you think it takes away from the legitimacy of the challenge, especially since now we have an umbrella available for spring. Just gonna let you know though, we're not gonna spawn in any more bosses this run. Do let us know if you'd enjoy otherwise, however. We're closing out winter. Sooner as expected due to our short seasons, but damn am I glad we made them shorter. Most of the days were just sat around and not really that fun to be honest. Except for today, where Tig finally reverted back to their truest and most pure form. Oh, a monkey. <laughs> You're like a little monkey boy, look at you. Uh, little monkey. That's great. I can understand what you're saying. Do you understand what I'm saying, though? Oh my god, Gurgle Snurgle, yeah I know. Is that what the pig man said? Glurgle Snurgle? Yeah, he said Glurgle Snurgle, yeah. You understand what I say? Oh, Grog is all now. Look how fast you are! I'm very quick. Oh, yeah, I forgot. You're I'm not, not Weber anymore. Is, is cooked banana better or just raw banana? I don't know. Um, I don't see monkeys with access to fire nowadays. I wouldn't know. Why not? I'm going to give that to the green because I don't want to be a monkey. Why? Either. It's epic! Look at you! Sadly, they didn't want to be a wonky forever, so they quickly reverted back to their spider form. Oh, well. At least we had a thought-provoking discussion. That's going to make fish. How? I put two meat and two big meat in there, and it's, it's going to make fish. It's going to turn it into fish. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's going to make... Uh... Oh look, fish look that's a weird looking uh, fish, isn't what it? What the heck? That's a fish crock pod. Fish crock. You think these are berry bushes? Look, these are berry bushes. Bananas are a type of berry. Okay. No, they're not. Oh my god, right, okay, here we go. Alright. Are bananas berries? Alright, are bananas a berry? It turns out be berry is a botanical term, not an English one. Right, cool. Blackberries, mulberries, and raspberries are not even berries, but bananas, pumpkins, and cucumbers are. Alright, cool. Get out. Get out, I'm not dealing with that. <laughs> is an apple a berry? No, shut up, alright? Next thing you're gonna tell me, like, is a lemon is a droop or, or something.
It's spring! This time we're able to make proper rain protection and I'm not playing as a character that instantly dies when wet. Oh joy. Because it's spring, all the bees are now aggressive. And due to the nature of how close I built them to our base, yeah, they're going to be a bother. However, it was at this point I realised that bees in man-made bee boxes will respawn when killed. So you can just kill them for free stingers and honey over and over again. Don't know why I've never done this in my over 900 hours in this game. With all these stingers kindly donated by the bees, I'm able to make dock kits. These awesome little things that you create land upon shallow water. Only shallow water, mind you, so no bridging back to the mainland. I did a quick check around the island to see if there was anything we could bridge to, like a waterlogged biome, seaweeds, or maybe even the lunar island. No luck, so I'm just going to expand the pier out near the base and hope to find some fish. Day 24 blessed us with the first spring showers. With the pigskin we have, we can make umbrellas, and with the deer clops we spot I mean, that broke through the dimensional fold, we can make an eyebrella. Here's the kind of discussions you're missing out on. <laughs> I'm going to puke if I keep doing that. What is a droop? Droop meaning it is a bend or hang downwards limply. Oh, droop, not a droop. What's the difference? That. A droop. Not a droop. <laughs> not a droop. <laughs> A fleshy fruit with thick skin, or sorry, thin skin and a central stone containing the seed. Right, so an avocado is a droop. Yes. A it's also a small marine mollusk with a thick knobby shell. Why did you put emphasis on the knobby? Like... Because it sounds funny? Also look, the queen of the monkey counts as a shelter. I hope she doesn't mind that she's been degraded to an umbrella at this point. If you give her any bananas whilst you don't have any accursed trinkets on you, she will give you blueprints for cannons, docks, and turf. But we already have all of those by now, so no point. Our food situation has finally started to normalise, thanks to the rainwater keeping the crops hydrated. Plus the bees, butterflies, and everything else really. That and we have way more banana bushes fertilised than we did by the start of winter. Nothing noteworthy happened on this day, other than this big banana bumper crop. Such a pleasure to see. Oh, I also expanded the pier out a little bit. Ended up leading nowhere, sadly. Shame we didn't get lucky with the world gen, putting a waterlogged barn right next to us. Oh well. A new day, a new opportunity. Of just running around, harvesting, expanding the pier a little bit. Or well, at least trying to. Sorry if this is a bit boring, but I don't know if you've noticed. Ain't much we can do here right now. Let's at least stop to appreciate what we've done to this poor, poor island. All the monkeys are forced to live up north while we own a majority of the actual land. Decimating the natural aesthetic. It's revenge for all those pirate raids over the months. I half expected pirate raids to maybe even occur on this island. I know that doesn't make much sense logically, but maybe some funny code quirks would count as being on the island as being close enough to trigger one. Throughout this entire run, I tried to get more pig houses by turning pigmen into pigs, killing them for their hide and turning the hide into housing. I never actually ended up getting enough hide to make another pig house. Mostly because it was rare for me to actually get a pigman that didn't instantly get murdered by monkeys. The monkeys are really good at kiting, so they can kill the pigs quite easily. Spring has, funnily enough, been pretty dry so far. I haven't even made the umbrella yet since we were waiting on the fish to spoil to hammer into bone shards. But that changed tonight since now I have my cool, shiny, probably ill-gotten umbrella. If only I was WX78 then this run, huh? Actually, if I had to put up with that music box circuit on this run, I would have lost my mind even sooner. Did I say something about losing my mind? Yeah, it was starting to get a bit old at this point. I know I mentioned at the start of the video that this wasn't as bad as the Lunar Island. I was wrong. It's almost on par with it. Hey, at least there's no Gestalts. That's fine. I did get a lightning rod down. A rogue lightning strike could blast our base into flames, and with no way of putting fires out via flingomatics, death wish. Oh, that would make summer a nightmare too. I'm not going to think about that right now. I've got plenty on my mind already. Like this hound attack. Quite a few hounds this time, but again, Wolfgang just stomps them. Tig did get mobbed at one point by some ice hounds, but with some crafty fighting around the fire pit, we took care of it just fine. Got a blue gem too. Literally useless, but it's shiny, so yeah. As you can tell from me not remarking on it much, resources are just fine on this island. 
No gold and flint, but lots of everything else. Speaking of flint, I love how conservative I was with flint, despite having 31 of it in my inventory. I could have just kept making spears instead of using those stupid cutlasses. Oh well. Tig remembered that den decorating sets exist, so they made one. To decorate their den. This should keep the spiders from randomly attacking me in the privacy of my own home. Spoiler alert, by the way, uh, they kept attacking me. After spending most of the day being chased by angry bees in heat, on afternoon 30, I decided to make an endothermic fire pit. You know, to prepare for summer, since it will be here before you know it. One small issue, though. Okay, did we get any nighter? No, we got none. We're gonna die! Why? Because I can't make a fire pit! No nighter? We can't make an endothermic fire pit, we are going to die. That is a huge problem. No, it's probably the oh, biggest yeah. issue we're going to face. Oh yeah, hang on. How, why did we not get a single nighter? Did, did we not get some at the start and the monkeys just nicked it? I mean, that's possible, but I don't remember getting nighter myself. Yeah, um, that might be an issue. Uh, we'll, we'll figure something out, though, don't worry. I mean, we can always just splash water on ourselves with paddles, hide under trees... Okay, look, maybe this is going to go pretty bad. Uh, I bet there's one of you guys in the comments right now telling me to not drop that nighter I found at the start. I commend you. I'm sorry. I even reviewed the footage at this point during gameplay to make sure we didn't just lose nighter to the powder monkeys. Nope, just straight up didn't bring any. Good at video games we are. Well, nothing to do but keep going. Tig reminded me of a feature that might just save the run. We can make, uh, what's it called? Thermal stones. Put them in the icebox. Oh, you're right. It's going to be really painful, but it'll, it'll work. We uh, can put I'll, the thermal stone on the ground. Okay, crisis averted. Hopefully. I smashed up Tig's massive potato to get those delicious baked potatoes from it. Did it during a full moon, too. How romantic. Day 32 gave us heavy showers we came to expect from spring. No hazard to us this time around thanks to the umbrella and the umbrellas via pigskin. I think it's safe to say spring has been defeated at this point. I started to prune the trees around the base. This is in anticipation for the potentially destructive wildfires come summer. The less things around here to combust, the better. Since Tig's den decorating set was barely working, I made a little fence and gate to keep the spiders actually locked up. They won't smash the walls thanks to the decorations. We found some ocean debris off the coast by the spiders too. This could be anything. Fishing lures, floats, kelp and twigs. Oh yeah, amazing. Just notice that kelp doesn't seem to spawn around this island. More pruning since summer was right around the corner. Oh, you may have noticed I built a little siesta lean-to at some point. Just some more summer prep. It's safe to say that food wasn't an issue anymore. I think these banana bushes and such grow better in the rain, but I could be wrong. I dug up those monkey tail reeds around the island since we don't need papyrus anymore. All they are now is a potential fire hazard. Same reason we don't have like a billion banana bushes everywhere. That and I'm really lazy at planting them. Got our first full bee box harvest. Yes, it took until day 34. Only recently started planting more flowers around here, so yeah. Time for that glorious orange overlay, it's summer. Our first time reaching it during these challenges. Let's see how we do in a summer with zero flingomatics and endothermic fire pits. For the time being though, the heavy rain will keep us cool. Look at our fridges, so much food. The crops will grow faster due to the extended daylight hours, but we gotta keep sure they stay fertilized since the summer heat will force some of them to wilt. Sure, being completely soaked is ruining my sanity, but with all these banana shakes I'm making, it'll get back up right away. The rain dried up, so now we gotta be a bit more mindful of our body temperature. I made a thermal stone to freeze since, funnily enough, it'll be enough to keep us completely cold. Just gotta be sure we don't forget to put these stones back in the freezer once we're already cold, since they'll heat up. How long does this thing stay cold? I don't know, I'm not a mama, how am I supposed to know? <laughs> not a oh, hounds mama coming. Yet, hounds no. are coming. Hounds were coming. Not a big fan of summer hounds since fire hounds make an appearance. They also just materialized in our base since a varglet spawned outside the base and did its little summon move. A little bit scary, not gonna lie. 
one of the monkeys were helping us out, but then a firehound appeared. I tried to kill it as far away from the base as I could, but, well, this happened. Oh, that... <laughs> I forgot there's a wooden fence by the spiders! We need to fight the wordlet right now. I'm oh, sorry, I don't have any armor. Oh, God, the spiders! No! <laughs> <laughs> well, that Look does it no! Oh, no. Sweetheart. Poor little dudes. Nighttime just consisted of us hanging around by the queen in the portal. Oh yeah, and Tig adopted those homeless spiders since they felt bad. Don't blame them, to be honest. Most of the summer nights were like this though, just hanging out by the portal and the queen. Day 37! Summer wasn't so bad yet. Nothing spontaneously combusted just yet. Don't, yeah, don't be rude, like... <gasps> spider on fire! Kill it, kill it, kill it! Kill it. Oh no, no, spider, come here! Kill it, kill it, kill it! No, he's fine, he's fine! He's fine! <laughs> I, thought, I thought I heard something sizzling, it was the spider! It's a spider on fire! Just had to eat my words, didn't I? Oh, Wait, the spider oh, and grass, I don't grass, Right, We're get... gonna have to limit it somehow. It's spreading. Oh, it's, no, 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 it's gone. Oh, it's gone. It's gone. We've got to take up these banana bushes. They're gonna spread. Spiders! Spiders, <laughs> move! Well. It's, it's, it's limited. God, there's so much bloom on my screen, dude. <laughs> Thought I was gonna grab all that ash. Oh, for God's sake. Oh, it's fine. We didn't need that anyway. Well, that could have gone a lot worse. Thankfully, we already had lots of grass and twigs saved up, and we always had the portal to fall back on. Oh no! No! Extinguish! <laughs> now this ain't good. <laughs> this is kind of garbage. This so. is awful. Yeah, this is awful. We're just gonna have to do that the whole day, yep, yep. All, every day. Oh, you know it. <laughs> Okay, you know what? I hate this. Someone with no flinger mags is an honest to god nightmare. God, are they getting a bit much? Gee, the base is catching fire again! <laughs> oh no! <sighs> well, at least nothing can catch fire during the night. So the bees <sighs> caught fire. Yeah, summer is awesome. Other than the occasional fire outbreak risk, this season wasn't all too bad. I don't know why we were worried about no endothermic fire pit. Juggling thermal stones in and out of the freezers works way better. And since they rarely drop a heat stage, their durability rarely, if ever, even falls. We're getting closer and closer to the end of our journey. Remember, I did say our goal was to survive a year. Granted, this is a shorter year, yeah, yeah, playing in short season baby mode, I know. Still glad we did do short seasons because this summer was so boring. We had an overstock of food and always stayed on top of any fire hazard. So whilst we're approaching the end of this journey, let's have a look at those that failed to begin, shall we? No, you can't do anything when you're a monkey. You can only just be a monkey. I'm so sorry. Don't move. Oh. Don't move. I didn't! Dead. <laughs> right. Are you? He's no, taking no, no, no. your book! He took your book! Right. <laughs> Did he actually just run off? Yes, of your no, yes, he just took. Oh. Oh. Why did you give up? Oh, he just killed a cross to shine. Take the coffee. Take the coffee. Oh, oh now they're fighting the shadows. Okay, the monkeys run away. <laughs> <laughs> Trying. I got him, you got him, you got him, nice. Well, now I'm insane. That's good. It's not. It's not. Ah, good times. Oh, right, we also got some sinkholes to spawn on us due to the ant line. Yeah, nothing we can do about those other than get them to spawn far away from the base since, yeah, not gonna reach the ant line on this island, are we? On day 41, I learned that dumbbells are actually a weapon too. 
They can even one-shot birds when tossed and mighty. Wish I knew this back when we were having food issues. It's a great way of getting naughtiness too. Only crows and puffins spawn on this island, however, and I have no idea how much naughtiness puffins give. If you told me summer would be the least interesting season this playthrough, I would have said you were lying. I mean, the stuff catching on fire randomly could be considered interesting, but after the initial onslaught of the start of the season, nothing really caught fire near the base. Sadly? We decided that come day 45, we're leaving this hellhole. I started to make the equipment needed to outfit the sloop we arrived on with a sail, wheel, and an anchor. It felt bittersweet in a way, but on the other hand, I'm done here. Working through the long, hot summer days, no risk of hunger since, yep, the banana bushes kept growing all throughout summer. Another superfood we have here, up there with stone fruit. Better for your teeth as well. Day 44. It's the final day. Tomorrow we can finally leave and consider this challenge a success. It was a strife with all sorts of trials, tribulations, the intolerable boredom of just being sat around and doing nothing all day. Surviving in Don't Self Together is a fun experience, don't get me wrong, but the prospects of adventure and the massive open world out there is just too alluring to pass up. I appreciated our time here, I learned so much, but at this point, I think it was time to go. Of course, we ain't going nowhere without one last hound attack. Lots of firehounds this time around, but thankfully they didn't catch anything too important on fire. Doesn't matter anyway, since it was time to go. I took that bird we caught all the way back when as we hopped onto our sloop, paddled out of the dock, raised our sail, and started to head on home. Oh. Hey Pearl. This was a really fun video to make. Despite me moaning and groaning about us having nothing to do, Experiences like this just make me appreciate all the little things that culminate to make Don't Starve something special. I never knew the Moongi had such powerful things on it until we did this. Like I said a thousand times during this video, I am for sure going to be making a baser in the future on one of my standard playthroughs. But for now, all I want to do is just sit on the grass and watch the clouds go by. Hey, thanks for watching if you made it this far. This channel has massively grown over the past few days. I started it just over two weeks ago now to this day, and I'm already sitting at over a thousand subscribers, and of course I owe it all to you guys. Thank you so 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 much for this amazing opportunity you've given me. Y'all are way too good for me. I don't want to just start crying and getting emotional, so I'll sign off for now. But before I go, I just wanted to let you know that we now have a Discord channel. The link will be in the description and on the channel page. Join up so you can chat and get all the latest updates to all things Bitterbams. I also made a Twitch account. I'll be streaming these runs in the future. For now, just make sure to follow me over there and keep an eye on my Discord slash YouTube community tab to know when I'll be going live. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys soon. Stay loved and take care guys.